We've seen that enamines are nucleophilic at their alpha carbons, and so in theory they can act as nucleophiles in, for example, alkylation reactions and acylation reactions involving SN2 and nucleophilic acyl substitution type mechanisms. These are called stork enamine reactions, and the first, and one of the most common, involves the acylation of an enamine, the installation of an acyl or car carbonyl group at the alpha carbon of an enamine. When we treat an enamine with an acid chloride or an acyl chloride followed by hydrolytic conditions, H3O+, a reaction occurs between the electrophilic carbonyl carbon and the nucleophilic alpha carbon of the enamine. This creates a carbon-carbon bond between those two carbons via an aminium ion intermediate. So there's an association of the electrophilic carbonyl carbon to the nucleophilic pi bond of the enamine, and this generates an aminium ion intermediate, which undergoes hydrolysis to give the product beta diketone. And this is really the ideal way to synthesize beta keto ketohydes or beta diketones. Enamines are soft nucleophiles, and this means that they can also be alkylated using unsaturated ketones in a Michael-type approach. So for example, if we treat an enamine with an alpha-beta unsaturated ketone followed by hydrolytic conditions again, we get a reaction between the nucleophilic alpha carbon of the enamine and the electrophilic beta carbon of the unsaturated ketone. And the bond selectively forms at the beta carbon, in other words, conjugate addition occurs selectively because of the relative softness of the enamine nucleophile. Again, we need hydrolysis to essentially break the carbon-nitrogen double bond and replace it with a carbon-oxygen double bond. Before we run these reactions, of course, we have to form the enamine from the corresponding carbonyl compound. Here that would be cyclopentanone. But the amine we use is also a question. It needs to be secondary so that we get the enamine intermediate selectively rather than an imine. And very commonly, an amine you'll see used here is pyrrolidine. This is a five-membered ring, a cyclic amine containing a nitrogen and four carbons that are all saturated. This is called pyrrolidine. One last example of a stork enamine reaction involves alkylation. In theory, we should be able to use an alkyl halide together with an enamine to alkylate it to get an alpha alkyl carbonyl compound at the end. However, this doesn't work great in practice with the neutral enamine. Instead, what we need to do is first form the enamine via treatment with now a primary amine, something that retains an H on the nitrogen, and then use a very strong base to deprotonate it. Here, a Grignard reagent is used. This generates the conjugate base of an enamine, an enamine anion, we might say, and this is a great nucleophile, even more nucleophilic than an enolate. When we hit this with an alkyl halide, which is electrophilic at the carbon connected, to the halogen leaving group, we get a simple SN2 type reaction between the alkyl halide and the alpha carbon of the enamine anion. This produces an intermediate imine, which is hydrolyzed to give the alpha alkyl carbonyl product. And this is yet another way to synthesize carbonyl compounds with alkyl groups linked to their alpha carbons.